And we're back. I'm Pixie. I'm Sen. And I'm Pyrosim. I was, I was wondering if you were still there. And Sen has left chat because... The studio's network appears to be going out. Oh, the university's network appears to be kind of not that great. Not good. So, yeah, those of you who want to chat will have to convey messages to Pixie or Pyro, and then they can get them to me. Um, As it stands, uh, we just put Echo in our would, lunch order. So <laughs> Echo would like to know what size sandwich you would like. Foot long. It's $5. Actually, it is one of the $5. I'm cheap. Not that we're plugging them or anything. <clears throat> hey, we haven't said their name. You didn't sponsor us. You don't get plugged. But we have a list of people who did sponsor us, and so yes, they I do did. get plugs. Uh, awesome Soft Sprites. We at, can be found at Awesome Soft Sprites at, uh, was it Blogspot? Or Wordspot. Word, is it WordPress or Blogspot? WordPress. 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 Thank you. Uh, awesome Soft Sprites at wordpress.wordpress.com. Uh, um, should make... Where awesome you can get sprites. all of your custom game sprites that you want. Or non-game sprites, because, I mean... Yeah, I that, that pony, that po- the ponies that she did were very impressive. I, I heart my Twilight Sparkle. So, yes, if you she happen to be, my books. If you happen to be a My Little Pony fan who wants a sprite to let you know it, you can order those. Anyway, um, let's see. We've also got Graham Crackers Comics uh, over in Plainfield. They also made a generous donation, so you can find them over on, uh, was it, Route 30? Yep. Um, and their website is... GrahamCrackers.com I, I posted them all on our little event page. And we'd also like to thank Leisure Hour Hobbies of Joliet for their fine contribution. And you can find them at leisurehours.com. They're over in Joliet. Um, also on Route 30. Off, also off of Route 30 in the other direction. Uh, and the Galloping Ghost Arcade. Um, their website is gallopingghostarcade.com. They're up in Brookfield, Illinois. And Doc has generously donated three um, day passes for, I think theirs is the largest arcade in the state now, isn't it? Uh, uh, approaching a- country. Uh, I know they've got quite a few games that are exclusive to them um, in the States. Just kind of flash those day passes there. So, yeah. They don't come up very well on that camera, but... Unlike most arcades, those uh, of you who have never been to the Galloping Ghost, you bring your day pass in if you happen to be one of your winners, or if you're not, throw down $15, and that's it. That's all you pay. Each one of these little cards is worth 15 bucks. Yep. All of the machines are set to free play, so you can play as much as you want, as long as you want. Finally beat those games that you couldn't afford to beat as a child. Yeah. Yeah. I actually sat down and finished Ikaruga the other day. Or if you're like Pixie, just play the heck out of Tetris. Dude. Tetris after a while gets so ridiculous. Yeah, the competitive Tetris game actually is really interesting. Well, no, just like when you get like so far in... And they start using the initials from the high scoreboard. Mm-hmm. Like, some people are jerks and just put cues in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they do have a lot of exclusives. Like, they're the only place I know to actually still find the Nintendo Power Play set, which was effectively Nintendo's way to promote their, their home entertainment uh, system by just having the games available there. So, like, you can go and play Castlevania 2 on an arcade machine. Um... Or they have an original Super Mario Brothers. Or the ever-popular Dig Dug. Excite Bike is also there. I, I don't know. I, I like the only one I ever see playing it, but, you know. Yeah, I like seeing the old, like, the 2D sc- uh, side-scrolling uh, uh, X-Men game that they've got. Because it's just funny to see her Magneto say, Welcome to Die. So you can actually find where all those I mean, internet memes actually was, came from. I don't know if this was a bug fix or what, or, or just terrible a translation. Um, yeah, no, I'm I'm referring to something else. Give me uh. a second to get this out. Um, the you know the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. Mm-hmm. How it would yell cowabunga at you every time you hit the credit button. No, that's a feature. Yeah, they've they've turned that off. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> At least I don't I don't notice it doing that anymore. Yeah. It, Do you remember Luca was doing it the other uh, yep. the, the other time we went there, just mm-hmm. slamming on that button. Um, it also is one of the few places I know that still has the uh, Aliens vs Predator side scrolling arcade game. Yeah, 
played the, that the first time we the went there. The only good version of Aliens vs. Predator, and I finally got to finish it. Yeah, we played that the first time we went there. And if you're interested in fighting games, it's the only place you will find Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition machines, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 machines, Mortal Kombat 9 machines, or just Mortal Kombat if we're forgetting that numbers exist. And it's the only place I've seen a King of Fighters 13 machine. That was their new edition. So, in other words, you want to win these. Buy a raffle ticket. Yeah, it, it is a fun day. So, I guess we can move on to our three's discussion. Pyro, you're going to love this. Oh? We're talking about League of Legends. Yay! Join us. <laughs> So, so we're going to spend an hour talking about it, and that's going to take almost as long as it'd take to do one match that you would have lost in the first ten minutes. Potentially? But you still have to keep pressing on. Uh, I don't know, man. I've seen some comebacks. Me, it takes me a long time because I play with bots, because I'm scared of other people. <laughs> Every game always takes forever in No, League I've seen Sen play games. games that only take like 30 minutes. Yeah, I won an 18 minute this morning. And it wasn't because they surrendered. It's because we honestly destroyed them. Really? Really. That's... Against people or bots? I have never seen This that. was people. He plays against people. That's right. I play against the live ones. I'm not ranked yet, though, because you got to get level 30 before you can play ranked matches, mm-hmm. which I think is a good idea. You can't play in the games that will actually affect your online score until you've completely maxed out your level so you're playing at the same caliber as everyone else. And you've played good and long enough that you shouldn't be stupid. You should not be bad at this game by the time you hit that point. People still are, but you shouldn't be. Just because you've spent a lot of time on it doesn't mean you're any good at it. I suppose. So I guess we're going to have a quick discussion to start off as to what League of Legends is. Uh, just a, a general I think we've summary. done that like on two separate shows, though. Yeah, but a refresher, because we've got a larger listening base right now, I imagine. All right. Um, So League of Legends is a free PC game. Uh, Ooh, hey, and there's new champions up this week today. Yep, yep, that came up. Anyway, so it's free. It's free. Uh, It's kind of like an RTS where you're not micromanaging an entire base and your army. All you are managing is one character that is yours for the game. Uh, it's called the summoner. The lineage of this game no, is you are that the it, it evolved the pretty directly from a Warcraft three mod called the Defense of the Ancients, which, which you might have heard of as Dota. Yeah, which and is actually is, getting a new full release as Dota two this year. There's by also Valve. The, yeah, and, and the, then there's also the new Blizzard Dota, which is coming out. It's, it's a very confusing namespace because there's lots of things that have lots of names. Well, this being an unofficial mod to begin with, pretty much anyone can jump in and make this style of game. Uh, in addition to League of Legends, there's Heroes of New Earth. I think there's a StarCraft II mod for it. Yep. Called the StarCraft II mod is called Storm of the Imperial Sanctum. <laughs> oh, hey, the Malifaux box just sold for sixty-two twenty-six. Well, looks like you gotta get some fancy bases. Looks like uh, I've already got them. Remember, oh. I had those shipped in advance. Yeah, that's right. Preparation. Yay! So as soon as our winner for that Malifaux box lets me know uh, what what crew I'm painting for him, they'll we have... We will head on over to Leisure Hour and... <laughs> we'll pick it up as soon as we can and get that painted and shipped out. You see what I did there? Anyway. Working those plugs in? Yep. So... League congrat- of Legends. Congratulations to our winner. Um, so League of and Legends... thank you for, on behalf of the Children's Hospital. <laughs> yep. You get free models... Or you don't get free models. You get models and sick kids get, well, something. Oh, yeah. Money, food. Food, drugs. Prescription drugs. <laughs> I suppose I should clarify. Sometimes you have to in life. So, all right, looks like... Uh, no, you... we're, we're raising money to give children drugs. Just looks like drugs. I get to do some painting. <laughs> all right, so continuing. Uh, in League of Legends, you're going to take control of this one champion. You yourself play as the summoner. You have your own exclusive set of stats and abilities that you level up as you play. And then your summoner, each game, that, or your champion, each game that you play, also levels up, gets new abilities, gets new powers, but buys that's gear. That's the particular match. Yeah. So. That stuff you don't carry between matches. Your summoner abilities that you level up 
do carry between matches. So they've they've got these things that well, you gain experience from playing matches, and so that's that's uh, contributes to your summoner level, and you can. It's like when you level up, you gain mastery points that you can yeah. spend on summoner abilities or whatever. And um, they're basically like talent, three different talent trees that you can dump points into. So yeah, while, while players will be very familiar with this idea. And, uh, and you and also unlock that, runes that... Well, you, you unlock will... slots that you can put runes in. Yeah, runes are bought with the game's influence points, which you earn through playing matches. And that's the only way you can get them, normally. Oh, wait, the influence points? It's not the other way around? No, influence points are the only way that you can get runes. Oh, I thought it was the other way around. Nope, you, can't, me. you can't buy them with real money. The thing that you can do, though, is the game does offer, for those people who just want to dive in and get the full list, you can buy seven pages of runes. It's it's a bundle pack that they have where it, it gives you pages of runes, basically. You're playing a spellcasting damage character. <laughs> use this sheet of runes. You're playing a melee tank. Use this sheet of runes. So basically a little tip sheet, little cheat sheet type of thing. Yeah, that's roughly $20 for that set, If uh, real world money, if you wanted to pay for it. Otherwise, you can just unlock these things through the in-game system. So yeah, and so alongside the mastery points and the runes, um, you you've got your also, spells. Yeah, you also get your summoner spells. You just acquire new spells as you, um, as you gain level, and you can like buff those spells through the spendage of mastery points. Yep. So you can take your basic uh, ignite spell, which is a little fire damage ability, and you can take that and modify it with say the. I think it's it's a level one power that increases it, so that while it's on cooldown, you're actually earning more money, and that it lasts longer. And they have let that list through the trees. You can learn most of the stuff through going to the League of Legends site. Just uh, which is um, for those of us in North America, it, it is na.leagueoflegends.com, or you can just uh, use your favorite search engine to get yourself there. I mean, you can even just search "lol" and it will take you to the correct page. The first one will be, like, League of Legends. The second one will be the Wikipedia definition of the word LOL, LOL. Hey, look, I have internet connection again. Sweet. Yeah, it's kind of iffy over here. All right. Um, basically, there's there's two ways this game works. Um, you've got your influence points, which you earn um, by playing games. And that can be used in store on, I guess, runes um, and to buy characters because yeah. you've got a cer circulation of characters that are free for a week's duration and then the next week they change. And so if you want to keep playing a character, you would need to buy them. Yeah. And League of Legends has a huge number of characters. They're over 50 now. You have a lot of variety on what you can play in this game. The As Pix just said, the thing that matters, though, is... There are only 10 available each week, and that constantly rotates, so if you find a character that you really like that you really want to play as, you're going to want to purchase the character either using influence points, which are earned in-game, or riot points, which are bought using real-world currency to lock the character in so that you can play as them. And obviously, it is um, it costs fewer riot points to buy a character than it does influence points, and so you're going to be playing for a while if you want to get them for free. Yep. Because it's going to cost you your time that way. Mm -hmm. Which, it, it feels like it's a fair system. If there were characters available in the game that, yeah, you can only have And all the characters this. don't cost the same, I would also like to add. Yep. But every character is designed to at least be competitive against the others. There doesn't seem to be a weight that, oh yes, this character that you'd have to buy for $10 is so much better than those basic starting characters that you could get for 450 points. That doesn't seem to be in play. I've been playing it for a couple weeks now and have been killed by just as many ashes as I have graves. So I guess we can go into the standard game mode. Uh, for those of you who've never seen anything like this, this is the system that all of these games run off of. Basically, you've got three lanes coming off of your base, which is in one corner of the map, and leading to the enemy base, which is in the other corner of the map. 
Out yep, you have a center lane which just diagonally crosses the board. It's just a straight line from base to base. And then you have the two other lanes that follow the edge of the map to the opposite corners and then into the enemy base. In and between, there's some other stuff. but Yep, in between, there's uh, three sets of turrets leading into the base, which will automatically defend against any enemy that comes in range and are strong enough to take down enemy players, at least for a while. Boy, do I know that. Yeah. I um, die a lot. <laughs> the game also spawns minions to ru that will just basically walk in a straight line between the two bases and fight anything they come across along the way, whether it's turret, enemy character, or other enemy minions. And they spawn at the same time intervals. The goal of the game is to win this battle of attrition that leads you into your enemy's base and destroys the thing at the heart of it called a nexus which explodes in this nice, like, grand blast when you finally get it, signaling that you've won. Uh, part of the game is just the battle of attrition to get across the base. The other part is building up money and experience to make your character more powerful in the game so that you can finally take down other enemy characters and everything in the line into the base. Uh, one of the key things in League of Legends is that uh, new players are going to need to realize that they are working as a team to do this. You are not a lone individual who can take on the entire enemy team yet. You d may eventually get to that point. But at the start of the game, you are just as vulnerable as any of the other characters and need to work as a team in order to just get objectives done and get into that enemy base. There are a couple little things around the map that you can pick up. Uh, for instance, there's... Uh, the zones in between the the actual lanes are called the jungle. And in the jungle there are enemy creatures, uh, neutral creatures that you can fight, some of whom give you buffs to your attack and damage, some of whom give you buffs to your regeneration and spell casting. Uh, and there's two monster characters. There's the dragon who's in between the middle lane and the bottom lane, who gives a large amount of money when he's destroyed. And then there's uh, what's called the Baron, who's this giant worm monster. And when you take him out, everyone on your team who's currently alive gets a huge buff that's uh, bigger than the equivalent of both of the other ones that you can pick up. And that's kind of like the game ender. If a, an enemy team manages to kill the Baron and gets the buff, it's going to be really hard for you to win at that point. Alrighty then. So yeah, um... I guess we can get into the the key thing of League of Legends, which is the fact that it's Try the, not to die. It's the most expensive free game you'll ever find. Because while it is true that you can play League of Legends entirely as a free game, just earning the points in game, the one thing that you can't get without spending real money is skins for your characters. No, basically dress up costumes. Yeah. And each character has at least three. Uh, I think the highest character has seven right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Annie, she's got the most. Some of which are really wrong. Some of which are hilarious and adorable. Um, so these are just little extra costumes that you get. They change some of the in-game animations, some of the uh, things that your character says when you use the emotes. Uh, one of the things I, I, I think I like this best, that... If I'm playing League of Legends and I'm willing to work for it, there's nothing that I can't have that the guy who's like, I will throw $100 into this game right now that he's got. I think that's what keeps it fair and even. If I'm willing to earn it, I can have it. The day one that the newest character came out, uh, Shivana the Half-Dragon, I got her using the points that I had earned and saved in-game. Versus the people who are like, yeah, I'll totally throw down 20 bucks for that character. And so I'm playing on the same level as them, just through earning it. Um, yeah, you don't actually have to spend any real money if you don't want to. But most people are going to want to. You're going to want some of that stuff. Uh, they do sell a nice, what's called the digital collector's pack. It's like the equivalent of th uh, 25 bucks. And you get... A large collection of characters, a nice collection of bonuses, and actually a, an exclusive skin that you can only have if you bought this collector's pack. 
And realistically, with the amount of time most people are going to spend playing League of Legends, like easily as much as a full retail game, I, I don't see a problem with throwing the company a couple bucks. Just as an incentive to keep going and keep making cool stuff. Because they are. Every time a new character comes out, they are just as detailed and just as unique as the characters that already exist. Um, I really think Shivana's a great addition to the game. I think He really awesome. likes the dragon lady, is what he's getting at. Yeah, she's fun. I thought Graves was really cool when he was added. They took this, like, cowboy outlaw character who's got a giant magical shotgun. And they made him really neat and fun. This sounds like it smacks a bit of Drive Angry. A little bit. the cowboy part. Yeah, he's got that whole that whole uh, thing about him. I don't know, magic shotgun just kind of brings it all back. So I guess we should get into, like, the, the tutorial state, what someone would be doing when they first started this game. And you're the one who's most recently gone through this, so why don't you describe the, the tutorial state? Um, well, first they put you in, like, a little... Um, practice scenario or it's well, just showing you the lane and how turrets work uh, like you are literally restricted to this is one lane it's walled off you can't go to the sides like, walk forward you, yeah it's it's go here this is how you buy an item i want you to buy this item okay this, this is it. how you right click click uh, a unit and um, it's, it's very much want assuming you to, want you to walk over here good job <laughs> it assumes that you have never played an rts before mm-hmm you have no idea what right-clicking a unit would look like. And but what I'm interested in is it does it teach you the more subtle aspects of playing this kind of game because a good tutorial system is very important after, in after, this genre. After the very basic, um, it kind of drops you into a game where your team is bots and the enemies are all bots, so it's just you. And that this is probably the most frustrating experience anyone wanting to get into League of Legends will go through. Because there are a lot of ways to play this genre wrong. There's, yeah. there's very specific ways to play it right, and they're not obvious if you don't know a lot. Mm. Which is why I die a lot. <laughs> yeah, in that starting game, you did die a lot. Um, the bots are terrible at helping you. And specifically, it, it's like watching the, the like, game... Like, come on, I know you have heels. Yeah, the, the game gives you a team of really bad bots on your team versus really bad bots on their team. So literally it is just it's a slap fight between two inept opponents with you stuck in the middle of it. So that game like uh, Pix was specifically commenting that why is this taking so long? You finish games in like 20 minutes where she and was I'm at like, like the 45 minute 45, mark. 45, yep. And that like took no, almost um, an hour. When you get humans on your side it goes faster because they're not as bad. They, they can actually use their abilities and won't constantly run away from each other. But that's basically it as far as tutorials go. Yeah, it, it doesn't do much. Like, the game will recommend that, yeah, you've, do, you've done your, uh, your basic match. Now you're going to do your bot match. Now you can do a match where you've got real humans on your side against really easy robots. Now you're going to play your game against real humans. It actually recommends that you don't do that until you hit level 10. Mm -hmm. I personally waited until I was 15 before I... I played against any live humans. As opposed to the dead ones. The dead humans get beaten so easily. Like they do. Um, and another nice thing that they did, if you uh, like League of Legends on Facebook, they give you a character and a unique skin for it. And actually one of the nice basic characters, uh, they give you Tristana. Who, it's basic, they, they call it something else, but it's basically a gnome with a rocket launcher. Yeah, they call it a megling. But it, it's a gnome with a, a rocket launcher. She's a very powerful character. She's very basic and easy to play. But, yeah, giving you this kind of character just for free, it, it can get people into the game. And all you have to do is like them on Facebook, which you can immediately unlike them if you really want. Also, if you subscribe to their YouTube channel, they give you uh, Alistar, the Minotaur, who's a really great heavy melee character. <laughs> I've been sticking with range mostly, because I'm like, I'm safe back here. Yeah, the range characters are without a doubt easier to play than the melees. Uh, it's safer to be hiding behind a wall of uh, minions and your yep. partner. 
Because typically, if you're at the top or bottom lanes, you're going to have someone with you. So, yeah. Um, that's just the basic scale of the game. You can a expect your average match to be somewhere between 20 and 40 minutes. And the community really runs itself well from what I've seen. Like, th I've met a couple... I hear, ho I hear horror story anecdotes, but, of course, the I, plural of anecdotes is not data. I've, I've met a couple terrible people online, but typically you just ignore them and go by the rule of, is it relevant to the game and do I need to say it? No, then I shouldn't be saying it in chat. If it doesn't need to be said, if it's not going to improve the game in any way, don't say it. Like, they've got this nice little tutorial on their own website. It's called The Summoner's Code. It's one of the basic things that they want everyone to read before starting the game. It, basically, it's rules not to be a jerk. So, I, I know uh, Pyro was asking specifically, does it teach you the subtle uh, nuances of the game? Nuances, I think, nuances? is the word you're That's looking, the word for. looking for. My brain's fried at the moment. And this, this game is a game that can be very fun if you have a good tutor who is like an elder kung fu master who who can That's, lead you into it. You are my elder kung fu master, said. <laughs> are you kidding? I will. I'm gonna reveal the one key lesson that I gave you that I I will give to anyone who's like you know I'm kind of interested in League of Legends. Play through the tutorials. And afterwards, the one lesson to remember, above all else, the only thing that really matters... Don't die. Don't die. And people think I'm being sarcastic when I say that. Like, when I go into games and people are like, does anyone have advice about playing this character? I'll just flat out say, don't die. Everyone thinks I'm being sarcastic. No, that's the best advice I can give you. Above all else, if you're not doing damage, if you're not chasing the enemy, if you're not uh, roaming through the forest, or if you're not buying the right gear, just don't die. And you're doing your yep. job. Well, that's good advice. In my experience, following that advice has led to, oh, my, my opponents are ten levels higher than me, and they can teleport. But here's the problem. Can't run away your opponents them. get to that point because they're killing you or your teammates. No, no, I, I don't die. They just level faster. Well, you're not dying, but you're also not staying out in the field. Right, and now... Okay, so stay out in the field and don't die. That's that's kind of hard. That that becomes more challenging. That that's the rough part because as long as you're, you can be in a huge range away from your minions who are slaying the other minions, and as long as you're within that area, you'll still get experience. You don't have to be the one to kill them. <coughs> of course, that gets you bonus XP huh. and money, but you get a little bonus XP and now, you get money. Now, did did at any point the game inform me of this mechanic? I don't think. Yes. So. It does? Yes. All right. It tells that there's a little, like, screen pops up that goes, hey, so, you know, um, I'm, I'm, what's, what's the word? Paraphrasing. Yeah. Um, okay, hey, so, you know, you don't, it's, it's, it, all you have to do is be nearby, and when one of the enemies dies, you will get stuff. And, um, but if you do fire the killing shot or whatever. You get money. Killing blow, um, you get, get some extra money for that. Um, but you'll get like a little bit if you just you know if you're just there. Um, yeah, the and so the game then the game then advises the game then advises you um, target the weak minions to, to basically time your time your blows so that you can maximize the amount of money that you get. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So yeah, you need to be out in the field to be earning the experience, but it is far more important that you don't die. Because that is known as feeding the champions. <laughs> then you getting the killing shot. Like, there, there's a problem that a lot of new players have where they entirely gauge themselves on how many enemy kills they got. Which, while nice, it gets you know it gets you like massive amounts of money and experience. That's is not, not the, the key point. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> because they will come back eventually. Mm -hmm. They don't stay down. And if you keep dying, your enemy is just going to keep getting stronger and stronger. And then you're going to stay in the game for the next 40 minutes, even though they're 10 levels higher than you. It's just now, going to be a torture. Typically, festival. I found most teams, once we're like getting beaten back that severely, they'll surrender. Both enemy and human, or both enemy and allied teams. What, there's a point in the game where most people just be like, yep, time to surrender. No, is the surrendering like a vote process? Or? Yes, it's a vote process. So someone will type slash surrender 
in the chat and it will pull up a vote tab where you can click yes or no. And as long as an over 50% majority has voted to end the game, then it will just end the game and distribute points appropriately. Which is the much nicer way of I'm not having fun, let's end this. All right then. Yeah. I have been in a I, I haven't played much League of Legends directly. I, I've played Dota and Heroes of New Earth and the StarCraft Dota mods. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe League of Legends is nicer. Well, the thing I like best about League of Legends, and I have looked at Heroes of New Earth, I've looked at Blizzard StarCraft, and I have looked at Dota. The thing I like best are the characters. I think it's so cool that League of Legends has so much uh, flavor in each of these characters. Every Basically, there's a whole lot of fluff to read if you feel like it. Yeah, everyone has their own story, their own explanation of why they're participating in this uh, League of Legends, which is basically the world going, we can't afford to do war anymore. That That's getting too... Pro So, so the plot of Legends is the plot of Mortal Kombat. Exactly. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Well, yeah, there we you have, go. We have taken these people who have nothing to do with us, but they will represent us in this combat. That's so, what a reasonable and non-arbitrary system for deciding disputes. Yep. Uh, so when you initially start the game, the game's going to recommend one of three characters for Because the, the, the answer to the question, um, war is kind of expensive, what do we do instead, isn't, you know, just don't have war. Not don't fight. fight. Yeah. <laughs> it's we will fight in different ways. New ways. Exciting ways. <coughs> so, yeah. Um, Keep when having you, to turn off my As I said, when you start the game... It's going to recommend one of three characters for you that you're going to play your starting match as. So it's either going to recommend Ash, the Frost Archer, who's a ranged uh, shooting character, Garen, the Knight, who's definitely the melee Man. bruiser of the bunch. And then there's a mage. Rise. Uh, yeah. Rise the mage, who has spells. He's at range. He's got some good stun abilities. And can later become an absolute powerhouse if you build him right in the game. Uh, so every match you play with one of these characters, they're going to start at level 1. You're going to lose all the experience and abilities and money that you had from previous games. But the abilities that you leveled up as a summoner are going to stick around, so there is some long-term contribution. Your character is going to be level 1, though, and start the game with 475 gold, which is almost nothing. And you're going to go out and fight to get money and experience and eventually be able to push your enemy back. So let's go over these three characters really quick. <laughs> oh, uh, chat. Pix, you ended up picking Ash as your starting character. Yes. So talk about Ash a bit. Um, she shoots arrows. Sometimes those arrows slow down enemies. Yep, she's got frost abilities. She's got a really easy scatter shot. She's actually the one that the game recommends the most because she's very, very easy to play as. As with most ranged archer characters, she's definitely squishy. If the enemy gets their hands on her, she will be taken down. Um, I guess I can talk about Garen, because I played as him for a while. He's a knight. He's got a like sword spin attack that works really well. Uh, and his ultimate ability is this thing called Demacian Justice, where a giant uh, sword made of light just drops on the enemy and does damage equivalent to... Er, B roughly based on how much damage the enemy's already taken. So if the enemy's at a quarter health, they're almost guaranteed to die regardless of how much health they have. It's what makes that ability so good. And Rise, yeah, as I said, he's he's the mage of the group. He's got a lot of range. He hits really hard. He's got s stuns and snares. These are just like the basic characters to get you into the game. They're all really cheap, too, so by the time you finish your first starting match... You no, know, by, by the time you finish the tutorial, basically, you have enough points to buy one of those. Garen's a little more expensive. Uh, you won't have enough to get him, but you will have enough to get either Ash or Rise, because they're both in the 450 bracket. And also, basically, they recommend range characters for noobs anyway. Yep. 
it's a little safer, and you can run away easier. Especially if you're Ash, because every shot she does slows the enemy. Oh, once you get that one ability, but yeah. Mm -hmm. But, moving out from there, you have a huge list that you could actually see from their website of champions that you could pick from. Like, it... It's actually really... The first thing that surprised me was how many of these there are about uh, in this game. And each one has a different flavor, different abilities. They try to be unique with each one. They, they don't like repeating characters. Um, I'll go over a couple that I really liked. Uh, you can do the same picks if you look over the list. Uh, I haven't played more than two characters. Yeah. The, f the first one I'm going to talk about, and this is the one that I stuck with for, for quite a while, is uh, Vayne, the Night Hunter. Uh, Vayne specifically kind of looks like a female version of Blade. She's got red okay. sunglasses, she's got a crossbow on her arm. I I'm going to have to divert the discussion for just a moment to ask about the voice chat, and then I'm going to bring it back to Vayne. Okay. Is, is there voice chat, and can you talk to your opponents using voice chat? There isn't voice chat. Most people will use uh, TeamSpeak to communicate. Okay. Um, you can, however, talk to your opponents in-game using the all chat. So if you hit shift and enter... So you can do a written chat with everybody. Yeah, you'll be able to type and they will all be able to see it. Well, I suppose that would work. There is the not first in thing I would do if I got in a game against a champion named Vayne would, would be to sing... You're so vain. And actually, I've had that happen a couple times. I think this song is about you. I, I'm not going to lie. That has, that has happened a few times in-game. Bravo. Excellent. Nicely I, done. I the, the League of Legends players seem to have a good sense of humor as to making fun of their champions. Likewise, the game's designers did insert joke lines into every character. If you type slash J, every character has a joke. Just and one. but Some of them have two. Yeah. Uh, Vayne specifically has two. Uh, I know Vlad has two. There, there's a bunch of characters that have two. And then every character also has a taunt, which is slash T. And every character has a dance, slash D. So there, there is that extra bit of flair put in. And, and some characters have custom taunts and things based on what outfit they're wearing. So, for instance, I know all of the, the Christmas-themed characters have unique taunts and laughs and abilities based on the holiday skin. Well, all right for that. Yep. So, all right. If all of this is reminding you of World of Warcraft, the art style will too. Yeah, the art style is it's based off of like Warcraft 3, Warcraft, without a doubt. A Although some of the newer characters are getting very, very detailed. Like, I, I was surprised when I saw Graves just how much detail was on that character model. Hey, uh, got I gotta take call. that. Give me a second. But, uh, Vayne's kind of the character that you want to play if you want to just direct damage, take people out. Right. And she's great for that, except for the fact that she has zero health. Like, she has the lowest health of any of the main characters in the game, and pretty much a sharp breeze will bring her down. That sounds like she has, she has slightly more than zero health. I like she's the got idea like of her having two. zero health. She has no and health. Then she spawns in, and then she's already dead. <laughs> it does not. It does not require any damage. Actually, there are oh, some. I tried picking up. There but... are some glitches that cause things like that to happen for a while. Um, if you, one of the fun things for uh, I have with any kind of online game that gets patched often is just looking back through the patch notes, so that like someone would find something like, yeah, if Twisting Fate teleports while under the effects of this movement buff, he dies. It's so like Ouch. glitches that you wouldn't expect to actually happen, just completely random ones. All right, then. There, well, those I've always longed to see a changelog entry wherein there's just a line that says, Fix, fixed a bug wherein this program sucked. <laughs> um, check out the April Fool's StarCraft patch notes. There are always good ones like that, like fixed a buff, or fixed a... Uh, fixed a bug that allowed Terran players to lose. Yeah, I liked <laughs> that one. <laughs> that actually was a Blizzard thing. Uh, inserted, new, inserted new race Zerg. <laughs> Those are a couple of my favorites there. Yep. What was it? Added uh, added carriers to the game for Protoss players. They're there, we promise. 
Yeah, uh, that's Vayne. She's just she's the honest best ranged for one on one combat. She can, as long as she's not getting hit, she will take down any other opponent uh, faster than anyone else in the game. Problem is when she starts getting hit, she's just gonna crumple like paper. Kevin. Yep. Uh, so the next one I want to talk about is one of their more unique characters that I really uh, love, uh, Vladimir the Blood Mage. So yeah, I know he sounds like a cheap vampire, but really he's not. Um, he's actually a, a living character. He's called a Hemomancer who uses uh, his own blood as his weapon. So vampire-ish. But what I love Does about him... Pale people. What I love about him is his I unique you in-game mechanic where he's a mage character who doesn't actually have a mana bar. He uses his HP as a weapon. So he's a warlock. Essentially. Yeah, but he has he has no mana whatsoever. He has no mana bar. It's just his health bar is everything. So he's this weird kind of mage tank because he has so much health. And you can just... So get... both bars are filled with his health? Or... No, he just doesn't have a mana bar. He just he's has his health there. bar. And so, like, either his abilities will cost a fixed amount of health or some percentage of his health. So, for instance, if I use... Percentage his... of max or percentage of current? Uh, both. Th he has one ability that does one and one ability that does the other. Hmm. His ultimate uses a percentage of max, and his uh, sanguine pool ability uses a percentage of current. So if you're really cocky, can you kill yourself using percentage of current, or will it just take you down to one and no lower? If you use percentage of max, you can actually kill yourself. Well, obviously, but, but percentage of current, mathematically, you could get arbitrarily low amounts of health, but not quite zero. Yeah, no, you can't kill but, yourself uh, using that one. Ah, huh, well, there you go. It will just so you keep... can just cast it forever. Yep, uh, apart from the cooldown that the ability has, yes, you could just keep using it. Oh, cooldowns. I forgot about cooldowns. Cooldowns exist. And the time it takes to cool down, you're probably regenerating, albeit very slowly. Yeah. No, Vlad actually regenerates extremely quickly. Hmm. Uh, he has he has a cool, unique ability to him, his uh, his free ability that's always active, where he gains magical power. I think you mean a passive? Yeah, a passive. Thank you. He gains magical ability <laughs> based on... Uh, how much bonus health he's getting, and he gains bonus health based on how much magic ability he has. So while the two don't play into each other, the, he won't just endlessly repeat and have insanely high numbers, it does result in him becoming incredibly powerful, because if I take an item for just my health, I'll get a percentage of that also as my ability power, and if I take an ability power item, I'll get a percentage of that back as health. Uh, I just think he's really cool that when when they went, huh, we want a vampire-themed mage, they came up with a new system for that mage rather than just giving him another mana bar and making him like any other mage. He he has something unique and cool to him. So mechanically, so that's kind of interesting. Riot points is worthwhile. One more time? So spending your riot points and or real money is worth something. Uh, oh. Influence points and or riot points. Yeah, each character. Riot points translate into real world money. The influence points are in game currency. Yeah, and you can use either to get these characters. I specifically bought Vlad with riot points that I had bought uh, previously when he went on sale. Uh, every Friday, Riot does a weekend sale where three of the champions go down to being half price if you're buying them with riot points. So they go down from being ten dollar characters to five dollar characters, which is kind of neat. I like that. They also put a skin on sale every weekend, or a collection of them. Which, again, you have to buy with Riot Points. Yep. Yeah, they only put things on sale that you buy with real money, although they do occasionally have price reductions. So three of the characters recently dropped from being in the top tier of characters, which is 6,300 influence points to lesser degrees. I think one dropped to being 480 and the other one dropped to being like 3,150. So yeah, um, and the final character I'm going to discuss that I, I've really been playing a lot lately is actually the newest character, uh, Shivana, the half-dragon, who is, she's a melee uh, bruiser character. Her, her entire goal is to just get in and do damage. Half-dragon on which side? 
uh, father's side. That sounds incredibly uncomfortable. They can shapeshift. Oh, okay. <laughs> that That's discussed in her lore. Okay. That the dragons can can appear to be, uh, can shapeshift into humanoid form. Okay, then. That her mother, who was a simple farm girl, apparently got it on with a dragon. All right, then. All in right. their tongue, she is Dovahkiin. Dragonborn. <laughs> so, right, uh, Skyrim is coming soon. <sighs> Skyrim. Blah. <laughs> don't don't you diss Skyrim while we've got Pyro on the air. Right. I there guess. will be blood. From Most of it's yours. I, have, I, have, I haven't played it yet. I, I am open to the idea that it might suck. I hope it doesn't, but uh, Oblivion kind of did. I, I guess I will be open to the idea of Skyrim being good. Then I, I will return the favor. But uh, Morrowind was really good. Morrowind was fantastic. One of my favorite games. Oblivion. Well, then our opinions are exactly in line. Yeah, Oblivion was terrible and boring. It's it's just Pyro. You're a bit more of an optimist, and Sen is, of course, well, Sen. <laughs> yup. So Shivana, I guess the coolest thing you could say about her is she's a freaking dragon, and plays appropriately. Um. She's absolutely great at farming. She she is a great beginner character, I would say. It is not hard to figure out Shivana, and when you do, you get to turn into a dragon. I think you might need to extrapolate on that a bit. So, in her normal form, she, she's humanoid like any of the other characters. Ooh. She has two fist weapons. She is just, just going to run in and punch things as her basic attacks. When she gets her ultimate ability at level 6... You can trigger a move where she will leap forward, carrying any enemy champions that she runs into along the way with her. And when she lands, she has turned into a giant dragon form. That all of her moves become AoE attacks, and she just kind of rampages around the battlefield, taking down anything in her way. She gains extra armor during this, extra health. She is a great addition to the game, and very cool character to have. You know, I was kind of just expecting to her be another melee fighter, but Riot is really good at just finding one or two mechanics to make each character unique from all the others. And she's definitely got it, and is definitely going to be a crowd favorite. But hey, if this has sounded cool at all to you, you can just check out the League of Legends website and take a look at their champion list, which has been fully updated and includes every character in the game, and just... See who makes sense. See who looks fun to you. That That's the key thing with League of Legends. Play what you want. Everyone is a little bit different, so you're bound to find something interesting to you. Are there guilds? Uh, there are not guilds. However, there are organized teams. And what's coming in the future patches, because this is a game that's constantly being added to, is you'll, you can actually get a team ranking where it will rate you based on the team that you're playing with. Neato. Yep. When you actually hit level 30, which is the, the peak of leveling in this game, and you have everything available to you, you have to have at least 14 champions, you can start playing ranked matches where the game will rate you based on your performance. Not just whether you win or lost, but how you performed in the game. Uh, but you have to be level 30 for that. And it, it's kind of like the end game of World of Warcraft, where... Well, you need things to do, so here's the ranked PvP system that is now available to you. And they recently added the new uh, Dominion version of the game, which rather than playing the Battle of Attrition that the normal version of the game is, it becomes more of a uh, capture the point system, where there are five positions around the map that you can now capture to slowly tick down your enemies. Uh, Nexus Health. We'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, for now, though, we need to take a break. All right, so I'm going to put on some more Daft Punk. Yay. And we'll come back uh, after the top of the hour on Nerd Talk. <laughs> 